Aú! Aú! Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Sejo Two and Love, here with another ep- edition of Sorts of the Topics, episode number 88. Got a bunch to go over today. Um, as we gear more towards the off season of the NFL and what should be an exciting off season for the NFL concerning the possibilities with the some of the marquee quarterbacks Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, etc. I got I pulled up the whole free agent list are the majority of the noble free agents throughout the NFL this offseason and get my and we'll give a little bit of insight of where I think or where I project some of these free agents may end up if they will stay or they will leave etc NBA also weekend just wrapped up which was uneventful in what's been going around as far as the NBA community. It was an underwhelming also weekend, but I'll touch on that as well. Chris Paul and Anthony Davis's injuries and how I think those will affect their respective teams, but I started with the call for a reason, and that is the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, Minnesota Vikings have done a complete 180 as far as their coaching staff is really concerned, you can pretty much say. So now, when it comes to the Vikings, and I think they've made some good moves as far as their coaching staff. And the reason being is because as a a football fan watching the NFL last season, you could tell the Vikings were pretty much in every game. How it and their offense did the mostly justice. It's just their defense, you know, put them in match situations. They weren't really an offense team or defense team. When it pertains to their injuries and some of their players, aging veterans. But I like where they're headed. I think, I think Skull Nation should be optimistic for the team in 2022. But for as you know, the... Viking sign, then offense corner of the Rams, Kevin O'Connell, to be their next head coach, replacing Mike Zimmer. Spent multiple years with Kirk Cousins in Washington. Bring in Wes Phillips as well, the tight ends coach. Formerly of the Rams as well. And their passing game coordinator. Who also. Worked. He and. I believe O'Connell. Were in Washington. The same time. Cousins was there. For. A few years so. There's the history there. Also, some additions. They hired Matt Daniels 
former assistant for the Cowboys on special teams, as well as Mike Smith to be their outside linebackers coach. So they're bringing in a complete different system, it would appear, on offense than usual, I would suspect. But, you know, Kirk Cousins, he falls into that category of, yes, I get it, his win-loss record isn't very well, and his comebacks, etc. But, he's played some good football the last few years. It's just his contract, and etc. But, you know, Getting O'Connell, getting Wes Phillips. That's a good sign for the offense. It seems like they may boast their strengths, which is their offense as it appear. Now, Clint Kubiak didn't do a bad job with that offense last year. Taking over for his dad, Gary, but you know, with the familiarity with Cousins, with having Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Thielen, you know, there's some optimism. KJ Osborne right on the scene, Tyler Conklin as well. So there's some optimism in Squall County, I would say. So, we wrapped up NBA All-Star Weekend, and it was a hit-miss All-Star Weekend. You know, people, and I get it, people criticize the perennial all-star games as it as it pertains you know the Pro Bowl you know with how it is played and the game same with the NBA all-star game look and I get it I don't, but this felt much more of a fresh air dynamic than the Pro Bowl when it comes to the the All-Star game because, you know, it's basketball, they're just wearing their uniforms, their jerseys, and shorts, whereas for the Pro Bowl, you know, you're wearing your helmet, you're wearing your pads, etc., etc., when you're not even, when they're not even going full go, full strength. So, I mean, I get people criticize the Pro Bowl more than they pertain to the NBA All-Star game, but still it was fun. Still it was fun to see as Team LeBron, and it was LeBron who dug in the win for his team, 163 to 160. The target number was 163. First team to 163 is the winner and Tim LeBron. Now, Steph Curry won the Kobe Bryant Award, which they're now calling it the Kobe Bryant Award and, you know, NBA All-Star MVP, which I mean, 
scored 50, so no surprise. Although, Giannis had good showing. The Rosen had good showing, etc. But, right man won it. You know, Seth Curry is... I get it, it wasn't act- more of an actual game. But, Seth Curry... You know, we say from time to time, he's the greatest shooter pretty much we've ever seen. It's just what he has done for a shooter for the NBA is just phenomenal, phenomenal. So that was the good, primarily. Also, it was interesting to see because Zach Levine... He was on Team KD and DeMar DeRozan was on Team LeBron. So that was an interesting dynamic to see the two Bulls teammates face each other. Also, it was good to see LaMelo Ball get some action in there as well. I would think Lonzo would have made it as... A reserve as well if he didn't get hurt, but oh well. So that was good. The bad were the dunk contest and the three point contest. So Obi Toppin of the Knicks. Won the slam dunk contest, and from what I read and what I saw, it, it was ugly. It was ugly. Jalen Green had a piss poor performance for the dunk contest, and just whoa. Jack was not happy. Guy Fieri was not happy. I mean, just... Jeez. Carl Anthony Towns. Shown the topic of Minnesota. Up for him. He won the... Three-point contest on NBA All-Star Weekend. So good for him. Good for Minnesota. Although, you know... Just surprising to say the least, but you know, good for him, good for Cat Carl Anthony Towns, who's having a very good year as well. So it's about that time, you know. It's still been a little over a week, pretty much since the Super Bowl, and as we conjoin this time between the drafts, etc., the new league year starts in two weeks, so... At that to look forward to. And while we're geared towards free agency. We got to take a look towards some of the. Interesting free agents to be. For the NFL. And it's going to be interesting to see. In this sea of free agents who goes where. Because. As we saw two years ago, two Super Bowls ago, Tom Brady, free agent from New England, went to Tampa Bay, won it all, won the Super Bowl, and he didn't 
He wasn't a free agent, but he did get traded in the offseason. Matthew Stafford. He got traded to the Rams and is now a Super Bowl champion as well. So, as we look towards the offseason, and we've seen pretty much the offseason decide the last two Super Bowl champs, could we see same sort of circumstances? We'll see. But some of the interesting names to roll off, starting with quarterbacks. Jameis Winston of the Saints. You know, he spent the last two seasons with the Saints. Last season, he was built as the starter when Drew Brees retired. And he did a solid job. He did a solid job. He didn't do too bad. He didn't do too much, but... It's certainly going to be a question as to whether he stays or whether he goes. Because I think he was bound for a good season. A good season with the Saints before he got hurt. And the team still finished 9-8. and eight. But I think if Jameis didn't get hurt, that's probably due for at least another win, and they probably have made playoffs. But the more I think about it, they may be one of the teams to target a marquee quarterback in the offseason. So that's going to be a team to look out for. Tay Bridgewater. Excuse me. Tay Bridgewater. For the Broncos, he started the majority of the year for the Broncos until he got that concussion. But, you know, I would suspect they bring him back. You know, Drew Locke, I don't think, and I think the majority believes that he isn't the guy. So, I would suspect they keep Teddy and perhaps draft a rookie in this year's draft. Because Teddy would, would be a nice bridge quarterback. So, and he did some good things. Or did some okay things when he was healthy. So, look forward to Tara Taylor. You know... Poor Tyra Taylor. Especially the last two seasons. You know. He was the quarterback who helped. Bring Buffalo back to the playoffs. A couple of years ago. Along with that solid team. In Buffalo that went 9-7. But. Especially the last few years, you know, replaced by Baker, replaced by Justin Herbert, thanks to a needle. And, you know, this year replaced by Dave, Davis Mills. So, I expect he'll be a solid backup wherever he lands. That's something to look forward to. Cam Newton. I'm not confident about Cam Newton. I'm just not, you know. You know, last season, he started well for the Patriots and they got COVID and it wasn't the same. This year was signed back with the Panthers. 
Sword well, but again, kind of fell off and was not the same. And yes, you know, out of football for a good amount of time and being thrust back in the fold, learning a new playbook. But yeah, I don't know about Cam Newton. I don't know. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, man. I love and appreciate Fitz. What he's done. You know. It's unfortunate that he got hurt. Week one. For the Commanders. Yes, it's going to be weird saying that name. But I got to get used to it. The Commanders. But. Because I thought. With their defense. And their talent on offense. I thought. There would be a real steal. To go somewhere. In the playoffs. This season. But that was not the case. And. But Fitz. You know. I hope that we can see him play for a contender. Now, I'll be a starter, but I would love it if he was a backup for, you know, they showed him in Buffalo in the sands during his match or their game for New England in the walk around. And that just got me thinking, well, you know, Buffalo, he spent a few years there. Mitchell Trubisky is going to be a free agent. So perhaps he goes there to back up Josh Allen. That's just thought, but that would be something. Marcus Mariota, you know, I enjoyed him and Rose with the Raiders. I won't be surprised if they keep him, but. You know, Tyra Huntley, I would say a one piece rise if he ended up in Baltimore, but also I would enjoy, you know, if Russ stays in Seattle, I would enjoy if he went to Seattle. I would enjoy it. Or San Francisco. You know. To back up. Trey Lance. If Jimmy G so happens to go as well. So. Just with the similar. Play styles. And. Formats. Uh, this That would be interesting. But those are some of the names. Although we also got a Super Bowl MVP, Joe Flacco, also Frisian, he could add some place. You know, um, Trubisky, like I said, Andy Dalton, but etc. We'll see. As far as the wide receivers, it feels much more deep when it comes to wide receivers being free agents. You know, Devontae Adams, I would expect Aaron Rodgers goes, he goes, you know, for the Green Bay Packers. He's going to be an interesting fight. I would, from what we've seen and what we've heard, I would not be shocked if he reunites with his former college quarterback, 
Derek Carr, and Las Vegas. You know, no Henry Ruggs, but, you know, having Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, and Darren Waller, if healthy, I mean, that's just arguably the best trio of pass catchers in the NFL right there. But, yeah, Chris Galwin, you know, hmm. He's the kind of guy I would love to see him in Cleveland. I don't know why, but I just got an itch. And, you know, I would love to see him in Cleveland because he's a very good. And I don't think. And here, here's what I'll say. Because I know people get so subsided, but the Baker and OBJ dynamic just didn't work. Didn't work. And it wasn't just Baker. It was the system. And, you know, OBJ was known to be, you know, we saw him in the spurts with the Giants that, you know, he can be a bit outspoken and a bit energetic on the sidelines, which I can respect. But I just think that dynamic didn't work and, you know, Him and Cleveland, I think him, Jarvis Landry, can be a real nice duel because they have some Larrys. They're both good receivers. They're both hard-nosed, keep-your-head-down receivers that just... I think it would be a good duel in Cleveland. So, that's not there. You know, Mike Williams, I mean, geez, that's, I can see him definitely, well, he had a breakout season this year, over a thousand yards, but, hmm. I would look, I think him, neither Jacksonville or Indy, that would be in, that would be very in, interesting in their own right. Because whomever the quarterback is for Indy, they need another legit number one threat. And I think Mike Williams, big, fast, Big body. He can definitely help in Indy. Same for Jacksonville and Trevor Lawrence. That would definitely be a dynamic threat in Duval. But I mean, also, Allen Robinson. Wouldn't be shocked if he returned home to Jacksonville. I'll enjoy him. Also going... You know, hmm. Yeah, Alan Robinson is kind of a wild card. Wild card. And it's just crazy. If you talk about a guy that hasn't had a lot of franchise QBs 
but he is still put through, put through, put through, and has gotten a thousand yard receiving seasons, thousand yard seasons. I mean, I'm surprised he's leaving Chicago, but you know, hmm. I would like to see him flip the switch and go to Green Bay. Just because, just because, you know, if Aaron Rodgers stays, I would like to see him flip the switch and go to Green Bay. Just, but I mean, you got Juju being a free agent, Jacoby Myers. I hope he doesn't leave. He probably won't leave, but that's the uh, AJ Green. You know, Watkins. There are plenty of guys who won't have a tough time finding new work in free agency as it pertains to the quarterbacks, I think it seems. The running back can position is where it is well. Where is well. Leonard Fournette, you know, he got his ring and I think he'll look for a big payday. I would love to see him with the Chargers. You know, I love Austin Eckler, but I think for Justin Herbert and the Chargers offense, if they want to take that next step, they need a bruiser. I think Leonard Fournette in Las in with the Chargers would be something. Melvin Gordon, he's a A couple of solid years with the Broncos. You know, him and Javante Williams were a nice duo on committee. So, see on that. Chase Edmonds. James Conner should get paid by the Cardinals. James Conner should get paid. He was a touchdown machine. I expect He'll be paid, but unfortunately, that may mean Chase Edmonds may be out the door in Arizona. Cordero Patterson, you know, on this list, he's a running back, but really, he's just a weapon, and he could really fit in on pretty much every team because, you know, He's a weapon. He can play wide receiver. He can play running back. He can play special teams. Just get the ball in his hand. I don't get why it's so difficult for some of these teams. Just get the ball in Cordero Patterson's hands. And he will make something happen. But yeah, I can see him on a lot of these teams Going forward. Um, You know, Raheem Mostert, I mean, with Elijah Mitt, you feel bad for him because he had a monster game against the Packers in the NFC title game a couple years ago. And with his story, unfortunately, coming short of the Super Bowl, and then... With the 49ers drafting Elijah Mitchell, who's had had a terrific season, rookie season, and Trey Sermon, you know, Rhea Morris, almost, or, excuse me, it's going to be out the door. Sonny Michelle, you know, former Patriot. 
I think he would fit well with the Eagles. Oh, that's just a thought. Him going to the Eagles. I would like to see David Johnson, boy, you know, where he was with the Cardinals and now he's a free agent. I think the Seahawks have to pay Rashad Penny. I think he's shown what he can be this season with a late spurt and, you know, not a top 10 running back, but I think Rashad Penny should definitely get some extra moolah from Seattle. You know, Ronald Jones, difficult dynamic for the Buccaneers. Larry Fournette and Ronald Jones, both for uh, free agents, but, you know, got to pay one of them. Jerk McKinn, he's shown with the Chiefs this postseason that he still has stuff left in the tank when healthy. So, someone's going to give him a call. You know, Deontay Foreman, I hope he stays with the Titans because, you know, They put so much on Derrick Henry's plate the last couple of seasons with the Titans and unfortunately got hurt. But thankfully, with the help of Deontay Foreman, they saved the course and earned the one seed in the AFC. So I think for them, if they keep Foreman along with Derrick Henry, that would just be a dynamic Perhaps you'll use them um, because Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry, but using more of Foreman to complement Henry would definitely be solid for both parties. The Titans group is on for free agents. So, Mike Gesicki, Mike Gesicki, for the Dolphins, has done well, pretty well, the last couple seasons. And he's a solid tight end who deserves a good payday. You know, It would make an interesting, I just talked about Tennessee, but I think him in Tennessee would be a good fit because he's not a great tight end, but he's good. And with the Titans the last couple of years, especially since Delaney Walker left, they had a few quality tight ends, but never a solid number one tight end. And I think Gaseki in Tennessee would be a nice fit. Sackers and Max Williams, you know, both free agents for the Cardinals. I think Sackers did enough with time with the Cardinals to get Resigned by the team, so I expect to resign. CJ Uzama, he may be a bit of a wild card because with his injury he suffered against the Chiefs in the championship game for the Bengals, but he's not a free agent, and we know Joe Burrow loves to tie in, go to tie in, so. I would expect just to keep that chemistry. And we know how much Kuzama is in the locker room. So I would think 
he is a definite re-sign for the Bengals. Tower Conklin, free agent for the Vikings, who I mentioned earlier. Um, he had a solid season. A bit of a weird dynamic, dynamic because they drafted Irv Smith, but he was hurt. But Conklin filled in really nicely. OJ Howard. You know, huh? Some interesting tie in to place in different places, but hmm. I don't know why, but him. And he may be with the Jets or with the Chargers. You know, Jared Cook is for agent as well. Or no, we actually, I would love for him to stay in the division, be with the Saints. You know, him, especially with a learning Adam Troutman, I think would be a nice fit. For the team. So that's the thought. But. Yeah. have a couple more. Okay guys. But that's really. Spot there for Titans. Got a bunch of good. Offensive linemen. And the. And free agency. So. That's going to be a testament. Tron Armstead. Who's been a main save for the Saints. Ryan Jensen. For the Buccaneers, Orlando Brown Jr., who the Chiefs acquired last offseason from the Ravens, and he did well at left tackle, but it's still a question of whether he's a right or left tackle and whether he'll get a good payday. We'll see. Brendan Sheriff. It puzzles me. It puzzles me how Brendan Sheriff is a free agent or will be a free agent considering how good he is, but it's just unfortunate with the sands off with the commanders, but we'll see. I mean, Ben Jones, I, was, I can definitely see him being resigned. Quinn Spain, also for the Bengals. Bradley Bozeman, I think is due for a good payday. Cam Robinson as well for the Jaguars, I think is on very well. But yeah, you got some good offensive linemen. And enough about offense, defense, got a bunch of good players to look forward to in free agency. Akeem Hicks. Akeem Hicks, the badass from the Bears. I think, you know, I would love for him to stay in the Bears, but I think... He'll want to play for more of a contending team. And, you know, I mean, Arizona, what was, especially when J.J. Watt got hurt, what was their Achilles heel pretty much on defense this year? Run defense. And when the Keem Nicks is healthy. I mean probably a prove it deal. But. They sign him. Pair him with Watt. I'm not sure if they get Chandler Jones back. But. Or resign him. 
But, I mean, him and Watt in between the defense is may sure up that difficulty. B.J. Hill has solid postseason for the Bengals. I would no doubt see him get re-signed. Calais Campbell, who is just a stud, a stud, his... Production has declined a bit since moving from Jacksonville, but, you know, he can still be a relative good piece to whoever, you know, Sheldon Richardson, John Reed, a bunch of good studs to look forward to. And Dominicus, who I may think he'll retire, you know, after this offseason with the Buccaneers, maybe he doesn't, but that's just a thought. Maybe he'll retire, but he's still a quality piece on defense. And then edge rushers, Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones, who I just mentioned for Cardinals, had another... 10 plus sack season. So, you know, he's due for whoever will take him. I think I think him and Las Vegas would be another nice deal. Pairing him with Max Crosby, I think that would be a solid deal. I mean, Z- Dave Ziegler, former Patriots executive, he probably has some familiarity with Chandler Jones and, you know, recruit him to Las Vegas. That would be a nice dual threat to have him D-line. Von Miller, you know, the Rams will probably resign him. Harold Landry, I'll be shocked. As well, or better yet, I'll be surprised if the Titans don't resign him. He had a solid season on the on Justin Houston, so around. Had an okay season with the Ravens. Melvin Ingram definitely helped their defense. So I would think he's going to get re-signed from the Chiefs. JPP, you know, we'll see with him. But also new Cheno Nuosu. I think he's... May get re-signed with the Chargers. That's be a good ordeal, but yeah. Linebackers is another interesting position. Devondre Campbell made the Pro Bowl for the Packers this year. Over Roquan Smith, which I was upset at, but still nonetheless, very good season for Campbell. I think the Packers should sign them. It's going to be weird. Hightower and Bentley for the Patriots are both free agents. So I would think we may keep Bentley. It may depart with Hightower. I don't want to, but it may seem that way. Foisad Ogon. For the Falcons, led the league in tackles this season. He had a very good season. Um, I would hope the Falcons resign him. I mean, Juan Alexander, Wayne Vanderich, you know, question is health, health, health. Anthony Barr, Keanu Neal, yeah. It's 
odd position to look forward to. And then pretty much the cream of the crop, the last of its defensive backs. Now, there are some key guys in here which I can definitely see getting big money. Big money in the offseason. Jesse Bates for the Bengals. Besides the old line, he they need to resign him. They need to resign him. And he's done very well for him and he deserves to get paid like arguably the top safety in the league. Maybe not the top safety because those rights are to Buda Baker and Jamal Adams, but he does deserve to get big payday. Same with J.C. Jackson. I mean, no debate. He deserves. He deserves the money. He deserves, yeah. Honey Badger, Tower Matthew, still does well for the secondary. So we'll be curious where he goes. I mean, still a son. Still a son. Quandre Dix. It's unfortunate the injury he suffered against Cardinals, but we'll see how that affects him in the offseason. It's just unfortunate. Bryce Callahan. I think it's a great um, slot corner for whoever. I would like to see him go back to Chicago or perhaps to Tennessee. That a couple ideas there, but yeah, just some suds to look forward to across the board as far as the free agency pool, but. It's going to make for a wild free agency offseason for the NFL. Chris Paul. Chris Paul. Anthony Davis. Unfortunately, Anthony Davis hurt again. But go figure. It's unfortunate, but it's no surprise. He's out again for over a month for the Lakers. You know, they're currently ninth. And with the play in tournament now, to get to the playoffs, they can definitely still be in the 10th seed to. Being that playing tournament, but you know, with no Anthony Davis healthy, I don't see him getting far in the playoffs. I just don't. Because we saw how far they were able to get when Davis got knocked out versus the Suns less. Last year, excuse me, got my words mixed up, but last year, so you got to be questioned. As for Chris Paul, it's more of a dent indictment, I would say, well, actually less, I would say. I mean, yes, the Suns are the one seed in the West currently and are arguably the best team in the NBA. But I don't see him falling too far, if all, during his absence. I mean, yes, at least a month, but they got studs across the board in Phoenix. And great coaching in Monty Williams, but Devin Booker, DeAndre, and Cameron Payne, etc. It's just going to Torrey Craig, veterans across the board. 
I think they'll be fine. Much more fine than Phoenix. And I think the Lakers will be without Anthony Davis. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I think it happened in the NBA. But, yeah, we'll see. I'm so pre- Well, I don't know. You know, coming in this point, coming to his all-star break, all-star point, I was pre- thinking in my head that what I would want to see happen would be a Chicago Bulls, Phoenix Suns, NBA Finals. Those are my predictions. And the Bulls still doing very well. DeMar DeRozan should get some MVP votes. I'm not saying he's the MVP. But I'm saying he deserves some votes after what he's been able to do for Chicago. So there's that. Although, I mean, of course you could see the Heat and the Warriors. I mean, with the Chris Paul injury, it's definitely going to be interesting. Because with the West Side, you got the Grizzlies. I mean, John John Morant. I mean, what more could you say? What he's done for Memphis. I mean, him. You still got Luka and the Mavericks. I mean, Jokic and the Nuggets. I mean, it's just... Gonna be a wild, wild west, pretty much in the Western Conference. But yeah, we'll see. But yeah, but nonetheless, that's the end of this edition of Sorts of Your Topics. Hope you guys enjoy it. I know I did too. Covered a bunch on the podcast today. Of course, if you did, click that like button as well as the subscribe. If you want to see more of these sports of topics videos where I cover sports news on the channel and just overall topics floating around in the last week or so. But yeah, nonetheless, be back next week, episode number 89. Next, not this Saturday, but a week from next Saturday. UFC 272, Colby Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. I'll have my preview on that fight and that event on next week's podcast. But thank you all. Be safe. Peace.